Hey, hi everyone. Welcome to our show. This is your host, Ranmay. And we have Brenton Thomas from TUIB Agency tonight with us. Welcome, Brenton, to our show. Hey, thanks for having me. Great. Brenton is the founder at TUIB Agency, and we're going to talk about SEO and PPC tonight. Before we move any forward, Brenton, I would request you to introduce yourself and TUIB Agency to our audiences. Yeah, so I'm the founder of Twibby. So we've been around for about two years now. And so we specialize in Google ads, Facebook ads, LinkedIn ads, SEO, and email marketing. And that's founded based on basically me going through corporate and looking for something more fulfilling and led me right into this agency. And I've seen a really nice growth over the last couple of years and excited to be here today. Super. Thank you for taking out time for this podcast, Brenton. And uh, talking about SEO, like you mentioned, uh, SEO is a long-term investment. We all know it's not an overnight game, right? And it can take time to see significant results. So how do you manage client expectations regarding the timelines for success of your SEO campaigns? And what strategies or milestones do you set to ensure that there is a continuous improvement and you are able to demonstrate progress throughout the process there? Yeah, SEO is a very slow game. And, and so to manage those expectations of clients, I really just try to reiterate before we even start. And last thing I want to do is, is take anyone's money without that person understanding like what's going to be involved in this whole process. So usually in, in the pitch process, I'll say if you don't have six months to wait for SEO to start to affect your bottom line, so let's not do that. I have other channels that we can manage for you, like Google ads or Facebook ads. And you'll get a faster return. But I'll just reiterate, like in the first month or two, you'll see impressions, right? From the content that we put together and fixing some of your technical SEO. Um, and then after maybe another couple of months, you start to see a good amount of clicks. And so I'll let them know that we know that we're moving in the right direction based on what we see in Google Search Console. But in terms of like actual like revenue, so you got to wait six months. And repeat that in all the weekly meetings, like over and reiterate over and over. Great. That, that's superb. Being so transparent at the very beginning, because that kind of sets the expectations and they're continuously not bothering you about looking at recent results that how we're going to achieve that final landmark if you have set the expectations really crystal clear at the beginning of the association. And talking about SEO, link building is an important aspect and has been there as a significant factor for SEO success over these years. And so what kind of strategies do you employ? to build those high quality backlinks for your clients' websites? And then how do you ensure that these backlinks are from genuine authoritative sources and align with the web website's overall SEO strategy so that it makes that impact that we all are looking for? Yeah, so, we, so we've tried quite a few different link building strategies. Like Brian Dean has a broken link, has a broken link strategy, right? So you reach out to webmasters and you say, hey, we have relevant content. Let's, can you switch that in? That didn't work very well. We've tried buying links. That's actually a very slow process. And there's only a limited inventory. We've tried forums, going into forums and then posting something of value and then dropping a link in there, but it's no follow. But the thing that we found worked the best for us was help a reporter. And there's two members on my team and they just, they just dial into it every day. We submit about 20 pitches every single day, Monday through Friday. And we're able to generate some pretty good backlinks. They tend to be lower DA, but higher quantity. So we have link velocity as we're developing our links. We did land the mass, or excuse me, American Express as a backlink. So that's a very high DA that we were able to get out of help reporter. So that tends to work best, especially for clients too. And then we, we do it for ourselves. And then we also offer that service to clients as well. Oh, okay. Super. How is the one way out? It's, it's tough. Time taking, like we discussed, but yeah, the results are there for everyone to see if you're able to crack it. Like you mentioned, getting a link, link from Amex is a big deal. Super. And, and can you also discuss the process of audience segmentation and targeting in PPC campaigns because you're so much involved into that? And then what tools and techniques you utilize to identify and reach the most relevant target audience for your clients? Yeah. So when we're building our audiences, usually it's, it starts with like deep conversations with the, with the client. And so the client will let us know like who they think they want to target, who's worked historically in the past. And so during our, like one of our weekly presentations or during the onboarding, we'll put together personas. And so then those personas influence all the ad copy, the actual interest-based target and the ad buying platforms. 
and things like that. For actual software, we mostly use the, the tools like inside the actual platforms that tends to work best. So like the keyword planner inside of Google ads, just the interest builder inside of Facebook ads, that tends to work pretty well. Absolutely. And then coming to your agency, Brandon, this is a tough market, very competitive in itself. So as an agency owner, how do you bag your clients? What is that process that works for you? I'm not asking you to give every trick up your sleeves in such a competitive industry. What is your approach of attracting or let's say retaining the clients and what are your unique value propositions if let's say we were discussing about bagging a new client and making that first pitch? What works for you that way? Oh, so yeah. So I, I think it's important to, so first of all, when we reach out, we want to pitch to someone that's in an industry that we've done really well for, right? We're seeing amazing results for clients in the wine industry. We can get like a 400% return on ad spend off of like book reservations. That's so people to show up to the physical winery and we're able to optimize towards the right thing in the funnel. And then there's, we can get out of learning mode and then we can generate just tons of book reservations. So hopefully we're speaking to a winery and then we can speak to those results and say, we're doing this for this XYZ winery and we can do the same thing for you. Same with like food and bev. We just see amazing results, about a 350% return on ad spend for a spirits brand. So hopefully you were talking to a spirits brand and we can just highlight those results and talk, like really speak to the return on ad spend that we're generating for others. And that tends to work really well. Showcasing facts, successful facts of your previous experience in working in that domain clicks it. And then the first way that first meeting or discovery calls when you show them that these things have worked in your industry and obviously they relate to the numbers there. Talking about ads and ad spends, like you mentioned, Google Ads is a popular platform for PPC advertising, right? But it can be really overwhelming for beginners, people who are just starting out. So what advice should you give to businesses or marketers? who are just starting out with Google ads and really want to get the mantra to be successful and they can maximize the campaign's effectiveness. What are those tricks which you would suggest them? Yeah, I think so like the Google reps. So I, I think they're pretty, they know their stuff, but I, I would just take it with a grain of salt because they, they want you to spend as much as possible without any correlation to result. So I would pick their brains, right? So if you're just starting out, they'll explain a lot of different things to you inside the actual ad account. There, there's some good courses online, but the courses, if you're not like actually inside the actual dashboard or the ad account, it's a little hard to like, like conceptualize. I just saw this thing in the course and then now where is it in the actual ad account? And it's hard to make that correlation sometimes but it doesn't hurt to take the courses. And then what I used to do, this is eight years ago, but I really wanted to just get into digital marketing for the first time. And mm -hmm. so I just started reaching out to people on LinkedIn and I met this really nice guy who lived in Louisiana and he just started teaching me SEO and we got wow. really deep into it. It was just, we'd do four hour phone calls, multiple four hour phone calls. And that was a really good foundation for me to learn SEO. So do the same thing with Google Ads and that, that's a really good, good way to go about it. Yeah, that's superb. That's superb. And then, well, one final thing that I wanted to understand from you or listen to your take on it is AI and chat GPT, Bard, we are all in that AI storm and content writers fearing for their jobs. I know that's not going to take the jobs for obvious reasons. A product is a product at the end of the day. A machine can never take a you know, human's place per se. But in general, what is your take on it? Where are we heading? Yeah, I think it's, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, we use it quite a bit. We don't use it for client work as much. Maybe a, a occasionally emails, emails, not even like our biggest service, but we might use it for some client emails. And then we mm -hmm. have to then edit it quite a bit to like really speak to the business and the nuances of the business and add the personality in there. Um, but we use it quite a bit for ourselves. So we do use it to write blog posts. But that's a big part of what we're doing. I right? think we're pushing out like four new blog posts a week. So that's 16 blog posts a month off of chat GPT. Oh, okay. That's super nice. And then Brendan, before we let you go, I'd like to play a quick rapid fire with you. I hope you're game for it. Yeah, let's do it. Perfect. What is your favorite book? Oh, <laughs> uh, ooh. don't read books. I read blogs. <laughs> I read blogs. Ah, okay. No problem. Favorite movie? 
Shutter Island. Oh, nice. And uh, are you a morning person or a night person? Night. <laughs> Super. And could really make that out. I don't know why and how. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, where do you where do we find you on Friday evenings post work? I know you work seven days a week. Let's say on weekends. Where do we find you on evenings? At a friends or family house, just playing a board game or just sitting around a table talking. Oh, okay, that's nice. And what was your last Google search? Oh, you can check that out. It's an open book one, so don't worry. Yeah, let's see. Let me check. Last Google search was because. <laughs> Google Doma G dot co because I, I had bought a a domain another domain so oh, okay that's, that's what yeah, it was yeah. perfect the last one and we're not not gonna grill you any further let's say if there were a movie made on you what genre would it be like who would the person be the actor in general not really actor the movie what subject would it be on oh. let's say comedy rocks you know action movie suspense thriller. Whatever, yeah. Oh, that's a good question. I guess sports. I'll say a sports movie. Oh, okay. Nice. That's nice. That's nice. Perfect then. Brendan, really, thank you so much for taking our time for this podcast. And I'm sure our audiences would have benefited a lot in terms of hearing from you about SEO, PC, link building. And we'll try and get hold of you for a more detailed episode sometime down the line. But yeah, I really appreciate it, man, you taking our time for this. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, great. Thank you. Take care.